If this wanders too far away from me, wave a hand in the air, but we'll see how we get on. So in today's readings from the scriptures, we have two widows, two widows, two women of faith and trust. And in the gospel reading, our Lord is watching people as they come to the treasury in the temple or just outside the precincts of the temple. The temple in Jerusalem, that great building dedicated to God and the center of worship for the Jewish people. And we've heard how Jesus had watched many rich people go and put a great deal into the coffers, into the treasury. And then in the story that we know very well, the story of the widow's might, here is the widow who puts in two small coins. We're told that together they make about a penny. And Jesus commends the widow for her extraordinary generosity in giving all that she has. And unlike the rich people and the Pharisees who we'd heard about uh, a little earlier in St. Mark's Gospel, giving so that they may be rewarded, so they might be treated more respectfully and shown to the highest seats at the banquets and greeted in the marketplace, the widow does not give in order to attract any, any reward of that kind. And she gives, as Jesus tells us very clearly, all that she has all that she has. And what she has is, in purely monetary terms, very little. Those two coins amounting to something around about a penny were the equivalent of one sixty-fourth, one sixty-fourth part of a day's wages for a laborer at that time. So just the equivalent of pay for a few minutes work, but all that she had. We're not told how she was going to support herself after she'd given away all her money. We're not told who was going to look after her or take care of her. We're simply told that she gave all that she had and she is commended for it. And what does she think she is giving to this widow that we hear about uh, in St. Mark's Gospel? Well, as I said, the temple was the center of worship. It was the place where sacrifice was offered day by day. It was also, I think, somewhere which dispensed money to those in need, had sort of charitable purposes, if you like. But the main purpose of the temple treasury was to pay for all the machinery of worship, to pay for and support the priests, to pay for the animals and other offerings that were going to be offered there, to ensure that the worship of God happened as it should, day and night, day by day, every week of the year. So what the widow in St. Mark's Gospel was doing was giving all she had to God giving all she had to God. She was, if you like, making that sign by giving away her money that the worship of God is at the center of everything, the most important thing that there can be. When we celebrate our Eucharist, when we celebrate the Mass, as the priest takes the bread and the wine at the altar, he praises God. He says, blessed be God, because it is from God that we have received the bread and the wine that we are to offer. All things come from the Lord. And so here at the Eucharist, we are offering back what God has already given to us. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to transform those offerings into the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the point is we can't give anything new to God, and we certainly can't win our favor as the Pharisees tried to do by giving more, because all things are God's already. All gifts come from God. What then of that other widow that we hear about in that lovely story from the first book of Kings as our first reading this morning? The prophet Elijah, uh, fleeing from those who are pursuing him, is in search of something to eat and a little uh, nourishment, a little sustenance. 
and the widow says that she has only a little handful of grain, a jar of grain, and a small jug of oil. And quoting words of scripture, Elijah promises her that if she will only be generous and share the little that she has, uh, God will bless her, and that jar of oil, that jar of meal will ever be replenished, and that jug of oil will never run dry. And so it is. When we think about the meal, the grain, and the oil of that widow, we can think about what we are engaged in here this morning. We can think of the jug of oil as we come to the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. And we can think of the oil, the rich sign of God's blessing and the gift of his spirit with which our candidates will be anointed. And we can think again of the gift of grain as we all come to the altar to receive the body of Christ, to receive bread baked from grain, which has become body. And so we know that as God gives us, gives us these sacramental gifts, and as he gives us the gift of himself through the gift of his Holy Spirit in baptism and confirmation, we know that like the widow's jar of grain and jug of oil, those gifts will never run dry. As we come to be baptized, as we come to be confirmed, as we come, all of us, to be nourished on the blessed sacrament here at the altar, we are receiving God's inexhaustible gift of himself. God, who is infinite life and infinite love, gives himself to us. He gave himself to us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. He gives himself to us by his spirit, and he gives himself to us through these sacramental gifts of baptism, confirmation, and the Holy Eucharist. Those gifts will never run dry. God inexhaustibly keeps giving himself to us all through our Christian lives. And so we, in our turn, are invited to give ourselves to the Lord by lives of loving service and of sacrificial giving to the church, to our neighbor, to the world in which we're set. We can never give all of ourselves to God, but God receives all that we offer with the love with which we offer it. And so like the widow in today's gospel, giving her penny to the temple, we pray that our gifts will be received with the spirit with which they are offered and that we will be commended for our loving service to and for our offering of ourselves. And so at baptism and through confirmation, we begin and we set off along this life of discipleship in which we seek to give ourselves to the God who gives us everything, who gives us life itself, who gives us all the gifts and blessings of this life, and in Christ promises the gift of life everlasting, life eternal, lived in his presence for all eternity. So my prayer for you both on your baptism and on your confirmation is that you will come to know this, gift, this God who gives of himself inexhaustibly, gives of himself in love for us every day of our lives, that we may offer our little might back to him and pray that it may be well received. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.